Okay, hey folks, it's Dave with KPPR Pure Pagan Radio, and right now I'm sitting here speaking with somebody who's somewhat new to the music scene in pagan music, and if you've listened to KPPR at all, I know that you're all familiar with Cloud, and uh, Cloud is out of New Jersey, is that correct, Cloud? Yes, Burlington, New Jersey. And uh, right now, Cloud is stuck at home like everybody else. And uh, it's obviously not too hot in New Jersey because his ceiling fan isn't on. And uh, over here in New Mexico, just to make you feel at home, Cloud, we have 80 degrees, blue skies, and everything is in bloom. Of course, we also are in lockdown and can't go out. So, Cloud, tell me something about yourself. Uh, well, basically... Uh not really much to me. I actually started out with this whole little venture. Um, and it started out as a joke for my YouTube channel, which is named New Will of Magic. And, you know, on that channel, I talk about pagan ideas and stuff like that. And I was writing pagan music. And I had this idea called the Wiccan Music Experiment, where I started writing pagan music out of like different genres of music. Okay. So I wrote a blues song and I wrote, you know, I wrote a punk rock song, but I didn't get that to get recorded yet. But, you know, like I've written all these different like pagan inspired songs through these different genres of music. And the rap song was something that I originally did as a joke. And from that point, it took on a life of its own. And it just kind of grew into this whole thing. Uh, everybody that heard it loved it. And I was like, you know what? I really enjoy hip hop. So why not? <laughs> awesome. Awesome. And I do know that uh, I, I, the first song that we heard of yours, um, i trying to remember which one it was. I've listened to so many of them. I've, in fact, I sat down this morning and I listened to the entire album once again, only because it was just... <sighs> A different. It, it, if for those of you who have not uh, listened to uh, uh, Cloud's music, I, I'm telling you, uh, you you are missing something really, really special. Um, and and I'm not I'm not saying that just because he's sitting in front of me, three thousand miles away. Uh, I'm actually saying that because it is something special. Rule of Three was the first one that we heard of yours. Um, <laughs> an amazing song. Just fell in love with it instantly. And and uh, if you don't know, Cloud and I have been in contact off and on for I think the last two months um, in preparation for his release, which is actually today. And we'll get into that in just a little bit. Uh, what's been the uh, the reception of pagan rap music uh, when it comes to you and people who tune in and listen to you? Well, so far, it's kind of getting mixed reviews. Um, and, and that's to be expected because the, the hip hop itself is something within the pagan community that I feel is very underused um, as a genre of music. And I mean, there's only like two other pagan rappers that I can name off the top of my head, Manny the Bard and maybe Gruff the Druid, you know, and I'm sure there may be more out there, but it's a very underused thing because a lot of pagans don't focus on rap music. And I have a feeling that one of the reasons behind that is because of the content behind most rap music. I agree. I agree. Uh, I, I think that's something that, uh, that you're probably going to have to fight for a little while. Keep in mind that, that people like Wendy Rule, um, who are more the traditional kind of uh, uh, pagan artists, um, probably felt the same way when they began, and nobody really wanted to hear their music. And I know that yeah. having talked to people like Incubus Succubus, um, they certainly battled uphill. So I, I think it's going to get there. Uh, anybody who listens to one of your songs, um, they end up starting to dance whether they want to or not. <laughs> well, well, I appreciate that. And, and that is the point, really. Um, see, when, when, you, when it comes down to it, hip hop music, and one of the reasons I think a lot of pagans out there don't understand hip hop because of the way 
that it has become over the years where all the other rappers out there are mostly talking about drugs or drug dealing or gang stuff or, you know, and these are all things that are happening in their communities. Right. And it's something that a lot of pagans don't really understand. And hip hop at its core, and this is something that I want to make clear. And one of the big reasons on why I chose to get into rap, because I've been writing music my entire life. I play guitar, I play bass, I play drums, I play piano. You know, I've been a part of many bands, metal bands, hardcore metal bands, joke bands. And the hip hop really stuck and it spoke to me because hip hop is a style that was created in a manner of for urban neighborhoods, uh, inner city neighborhoods to talk about what's going on in their communities and you know what also what's going on in their communities and how the stigma surrounding their communities affects them so basically what it did is hip-hop has given people a voice that before would feel like and or didn't really have a voice in society so what it did was it gave these people a voice and if you look at popular culture nowadays and you look at how music has evolved especially hip-hop music rap music in general has had a effect on every genre of music and it's had an effect on our culture as americans and people across the world and it's something basically a form of poetry to a beat that gives you a voice. And I feel that I'm using this as a matter for the pagan that is misunderstood at their job or the pagan that is misunderstood with their family. And it's just ways to explain pagan life and pagan ideas in a manner to, to where people can understand. Sounds perfect. And I, I would agree 100%. You know, I'm, I told you before this interview began that I'm old. I'm 66. I actually grew up in the 60s. And uh, nobody liked our music either. Um, it took us a while to get our music out there. And, and I'm telling you people, as you listen to uh, Cloud today, talk to us. If you have not listened to any of his songs, you are missing out on probably one of the most refreshing things to hit pagan music in a long time. And, you know, Cloud has, uh, I'm not even going to tell you his real name, um, but I am going to ask Cloud how he came up with the name Cloud. Well, it's funny. It's actually my craft name. Um, and <clears throat> pardon me. I chose this name back when I was a, a young witchling. And um, I would say I was about 15 years old. And along with a whole bunch of other young witches in my day in the, in the 90s, I came across this book called Wicca, A Guide for the Solitary Practitioner by Scott Cunningham. Yep. And I was reading that book, and then I started getting into reading Raven Wolf and Grimasi and Buckland, and I just kind of like dove into studies, and I chose the craft name Cloud because I feel like I am a cloud. I've always been the guy who hears all of his friends out and hears his family out and does whatever he can and holds a lot for other people around me until eventually it gets to a point where I have to release and then I end up either one completely flipping out or two, you know, waterworks. And <laughs> it's a very emotional thing. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I chose the name Cloud. Awesome. Awesome. Now let's talk about the, uh, the album that you're releasing today and I'll let everybody know we're recording this on 427 2020 and we're doing it by social distancing, <laughs> only because we had no choice in the matter. Uh, Correct. <laughs> but uh, uh, Misconceptions, I believe, is the name of the album. Yes. Um, 
And uh, why don't you tell us some of the songs on there, how many songs are on there, and really important, tell us the price. Because honestly, guys, I'm not lying. Earlier this morning, if you looked at the KPR PR, uh, Facebook feed, we put up there, you can get this entire album for less than you'd spend for lunch, assuming you could actually go out and buy lunch, which you can't do right now. But th this, this is probably the best money you are going to spend this month, I guarantee it. So so why don't you tell us a little bit about the album, a little bit about the songs, maybe some backstories on a couple of the songs. Okay. Well, the album itself is meant to take you on a ride. It goes through a lot of different emotions that one would feel as a pagan that you could relate to of situations that we've been into. For example, uh, the song Seen from a Convenience Store. I it's, want to say it's the sixth track on the album. Um, it's definitely the hardest hitting track on the album. And it's literally written from a standpoint of a pagan standing in line and somebody starting to give them a bunch of flack for being pagan right there in line and the emotions that come along with it. And there's a lot of anger that comes out in that. And it is something that a lot of pagans have dealt with in their lives. You know, uh, another track that, you know, speaks a lot to me, is the role of three because a lot of people out there who practice magic that song is meant for to be more of a warning to those who practice magic to really think through what they're doing before they do it um and it's little things like that a lot of the songs on the album are meant for the young witch they are not meant for the elders who have been practicing for 20 years they're meant for the people who are starting out along their paths. And, but there are songs that speak to the entire community as a whole. For example, the song Community, which I've actually heard quite a bit on KPPR, so thank you for that. The, um, that song is meant as a calling for the entire community to come together. Awesome. And, and the reason why I say that is because one of the things that really turns me off and it turns off a lot of people especially when they're searching for covens and you know looking for guides to be able to help teach them the craft is these witch wars between different traditions and my past better than your path and all this other you know hullabaloo that goes along with that and what it does is it basically splinters our community as a whole and the song is meant to be an attempt at bringing everybody back together. That's yeah, a great song. It's one of my favorites. And, you know, uh, in, in listening to the album again this morning, as I told you, I had done uh, another one I really, really, well, I really like them all, but um, I loved Aphrodite's Blessing. I think that's an amazing song. People Just Scared, uh, for those who haven't heard that song, <laughs> you really need to listen to People Just Scared. It's an amazing song. And, uh, you know, I told everybody before that they can get this for less than the price of lunch. I'll make it even sweeter for them right now guys there, there's 14 tracks on this album 14 now one of them is only the intro it's only 41 seconds long but after that you're into solid music for another 13 tracks guess what it's going to be less than a bucket track now you tell me where you can go get lunch for 13 dollars you can't in fact you're not even going to spend 13 dollars on clouds misconceptions you're not even going to be close to 13 dollars you know what we'll just take three dollars off and you can get it for 10. So, yep. you know, you, you need to jump in and get this thing um, because as Cloud gets more and more known, um, his prices are going to go up. You know, it's, if, you, if you think it's cheap, go talk to Dan the Bard and see how much some of his concerts cost. Speaking of Dan the Bard, I got a challenge for Cloud. So Dan the Bard and Burning Sage, um, talked to them the other day. They both been doing home concerts. Well, Cloud, guess what? You're at home. Uh, <laughs> have, you thought, <laughs> have you thought of doing a, a concert on YouTube? Okay, so I have. Uh, I was thinking about streaming it live on my YouTube channel, Moon Willow Magic. However, I am currently computerless and working off of a cell phone. And Ooh. YouTube just put out this happy little thing that you have to have 1,000 subscribers to be able to li live stream live. So what the plan is, is that we are going to do one on Facebook Live. 
Yeah, that's where Dan the Bard and Burning Sage do theirs. So that's a good platform. Yeah. Uh, so right now I'm working out the logistics of how to be able to play backing tracks and use the microphone to be able to do that with a cell phone. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the current <laughs> the current plan is to run it through my PA right. that I have set up for live shows and everything and run the backing tracks through there, use the microphone and set the speakers up properly around the phone so that it picks up. And I do have a microphone that I can plug into the phone. So hopefully that will work proper, but I still have to test a few things on that. Sure. So I don't have a specific date set for that. Okay. <clears throat> but if you want to keep up with that, because it will happen, you can by all means find me on Facebook at cloud wraps Wicca and you can find me there or you can follow me on Twitter at cloud wraps Wicca. Well, so that's both simple. of those I'll be giving constant updates on what's going on with the live show. Awesome. Okay. So let's, uh, let's just wrap this up with how they can buy your album. Um, because I know people are going to want to buy it. And you know, every time we, we're not going to play this interview just once. So if you tuned in and you're halfway through the interview with cloud, just stick around KPPR. You're not going to find music you don't like anyway. So just stick on the radio there. We're going to play this probably two or three times every couple of hours. Um, so if you came in in the middle of this interview, just, just wait a couple hours, you'll hear it again. We really want to get Cloud's name out there to the pagan community so that they can get exposed to his music. So why don't you tell them how they can get this amazing deal of 14 tracks for 10 bucks? Well, as of right now, the only place that you can get it is on Bandcamp. And the best way to do that would be the cloud wraps Wicca, all one word, dot bandcamp dot com. Now, eventually, it will be available on streaming sites like Spotify and iTunes and all of that. But right now, it's caught up in a log jam of trying to be set up on those stores. So, but it is live on Bandcamp, and it, it's only ten dollars. So that is something that you know I, I did on purpose because I want people to be able to hear my music and not pay an arm and a leg for it, you know? So I want to be sure that everybody enjoys it and they get their money's worth out of it, you know? Yeah. And now I'm telling you folks, it's well worth the $10. It, it really, really is. And uh, once, once I conclude this interview, I'm going to have Cloud stay on the line because I've got something that uh, he may be interested in, and that's how to get his, uh, his album, which is digital right now, onto CD and, uh, and uh, get it into some other stores for those of us who will eventually be able to get back to other stores sooner or later. Okay, Cloud, I, I really appreciated my time with you. Don't hang up when I conclude this interview, but you are an amazing songwriter, an amazing singer, and a refreshing breath to the pagan music community, my friend. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And thanks for having me on. Anytime, Cloud.